Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner, and we're covering section 511, Magnetic Fields, in chapter 5, Magnetostatics. Um, I'm going to move fast, but you can always rewind. Thumbs up and share if you appreciate what I'm doing. And as always, you can put your questions or comments in the video response or in the comments below. And uh, let's get started. So, magnets. So, magnets are really weird. <laughs> you know, if, if you... Uh, if you uh, can get a hold of magnets for yourself, I mean, I think as a physicist you have to learn to play with things and just, you know, just have fun here. And then, anyway, these are really weird. They're kind of like electric charges, like they can repel. You can't really see the force, but there's a force there that's pushing against it. And the closer I get, the stronger it gets. You can kind of feel it even from this kind of distance. But if you ro rotate it, and they attract. I didn't rotate it all the way there. So they attract as well. So they kind of like opposite charges but negative but same charges anyway um, it's not really attracting or repelling either I feel some kind of like rotation that's going on here right so if I do it just right try to rotate and sometimes I can get them to flip over you see that movement that no we're, that's just you know so you can get sometimes really weird movement anyway so magnets are really weird um, and so we're not going to start with magnets. We're going to start with magnetic fields. And so, let's set that over to the side there. So magnetic fields are usually represented with a vector called B. Why they chose B, I'll never know. Um, I'm sure somebody knows why. I, I take that back. Anyway, the we're going to start with the magnetic fields. And if you remember with electric fields, like you can express Coulomb's law as an interaction between two charges a certain distance apart. And it's rather simple. Or you can express Coulomb's law as in here's some source charges that create an electric field. So here we have like some kind of charge over here, and it creates an electric field, right? And then you take your test charge and you put it in that electric field, and you see how the charge interacts with the field without even thinking about what source charge generated it. So with magnetism, we're going to do something similar. So there's going to be something over here creating a B field, and then something over here inter interacting with that B field. So um, what generates the B field? The answer is not charges, but, well, monopoles aside, but currents. So currents Okay. And then what does B field interact with? Uh, again, magnets don't interact with charges, they interact with currents. So really, what's happening with the magnetic stuff, and the reason why it's kind of weird is because you're not dealing with charges that are stationary, but charges that are moving. The moving charge generates a magnetic field, which interacts with another moving charge. Um, the, there's really two actions going on first the charge that generates a magnetic field so let's draw a current flowing this way across the page actually I should have a point up a little bit out of the page like this you'll see why in a second the actual magnetic field that's generated wraps around did I do it the wrong direction no I did it the right direction wraps around the the current it follows the right hand rule Bloop, and then it follows the right hand rule. Okay, and so it's uh, the 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 field is perpendicular there to the, the 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 current. And if you had another current over here, so this magnetic field obviously extends outward. How does it interact with the current? And the answer is, if the current and the magnetic field are pointing in the exact same direction, that's nothing's going to happen. It's only when they're perpendicular to each other that you get an effect. And in fact, the force is equal to the charge's motion, QV, cross B. In this case, the B is actually pointing into the page over here. And so you get a force this direction. Okay. And Newton's third law says that equal and opposites attract. So when you have two wires that are parallel to each other, you're going to get a force that attracts them together. And I realize I should have used different colors. Whereas if you had a case where one wire is going up, and the other wire is going down, 
Well, the magnetic field generated by the wire on the left is curling up into the page and down into the page on that side. And so over here you have a B field that's going down. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes. And now you have QV, so the direction of the charge moving, cross B, so QV cross B, and you get a force vector that points this way. And Newton's third law, so you get the two wires repelling each other. Um, section 5.1 deals with how moving charges interact with the magnetic field. Section 5.2 deals with how moving charges generate an electric uh, magnetic field. 5.3 and 5.4 uh, introduce you to the mysterious, magical, magnificent uh, magnetic potential field A vector. Um, hopefully this is the first time you've heard of that, so you actually have some anticipation building up for it. And then finally in chapter 6 we're going to cover actually how magnets behave, how the magnetic field interacts with real matter. And you'll get to figure out why these things tend to repel like this but attract like this. So uh, thanks for watching. Um, see you in section 512. And don't forget to try and solve the problems on your own before asking for help. And uh, be sure to share this with your friends. Thank you. Bye.